How to Cope with Loss. Welcome to the Grief and Loss online workshop. It's not just grief from a death that we are exploring today. How to transform your life and improve every relationship. The objective is moving you from the pain of grief and loss to a vibrant, dynamic, self-confident you. We have grief and loss from many different events. We are going to look at several of these today. As we go through this webinar, you will need to have in hand a pen and paper and a disposable string. It could be a cord, a string, a sewing thread, mm -hmm. yarn, something that resembles a cord and scissors to cut with. A webinar disclaimer. I am not going to read this to you. I will say that you should always consult your medical professional for any health issues you have. This webinar is for informational purposes only. All rights are reserved. Healing with the Rev LLC hereby disclaims any and all liability to any party for any direct, indirect, implied, punitive, special, incidental, or other consequential damages arising directly or indirectly from any use of the webinar content, which is provided as is and without warranties. We are going to explore some losses that are quite common in our society now. Do you ever have a difficult time staying present in your body? Do you sometimes feel as if you are outside your body, observing it as you would a movie? Many times when we are in the midst of loss or grief, we can't see it because it is so front and center. Sometimes we need to step back and do a 10,000 foot view into our life to see what is going on around us and get a different and fresh perspective. It is only when we allow ourselves to do that can we really become present in our body. According to MightyPursuit.com, 792 million people worldwide reported to have a mental health disorder. This is common among people who feel deadened. Do you ever feel numb, apathetic, or deadened? My dad told me once, Teresa, there are a lot of walking dead people. I thought that was a very interesting statement, and I inquired further. What do you mean by that? He said, Teresa, there are people in our town that don't care about anything that happens here. They don't do anything to try to keep the town alive. I grew up in a rural town in North Dakota, population when I was growing up around 500 people, now less than 300 people. Unfortunately, the only thing that grows in a small town is a cemetery. Both of my parents were in every organization that they could belong to in town. They were active participants. When you let life happen to you, rather than make life happen for you, then you feel apathetic or numb. You have been burned somehow. Something happened to you that disempowered you. You feel you have no choices in life. According to DefeatSuicide.com, 20%, that's one in five adults, suffer from a diagnosable mental illness in a given year. Every day, approximately 123 Americans die by suicide, and there is one death by suicide in the U.S. every 12 minutes. We are in the middle of an epidemic. Suicide is usually committed by someone who is experiencing chronic depression. Do you suffer from chronic depression? Many people have suffered from depression for many years because of things that have happened. You could have been abused as a child or in a relationship. Perhaps you divorced someone whom you really loved, but it wasn't working out. One of you was growing and the other was not growing in the same direction as you, so you divorced. One of you made more money or controlled the purse strings and the other feels left out. If divorced, you may have been the one with no career and had to go get a job to keep a roof over your head, food on the table, and clothes on your back. You may have been temporarily homeless. Now you have a place to call home, and the present economic conditions is threatening that security. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, an estimated 21 million adults in the U.S. had at least one major depressive episode. This number represented 8.4% of all U.S. adults. The prevalence of major depressive episode was higher among adult females, 10.5% compared to males, 
The prevalence of adults with a major depressive episode was highest among individuals aged 18 to 25, 17%. The prevalence of major depressive episode was highest among those who reported having multiple two or more races, 15.9%. Chronic depression can be an underlying issue when dealing with immune system problems because these are also considered chronic conditions. Do you have problems with your immune system and have trouble resisting illness? Many people who have been dealing with grief and loss have been traumatized. These traumas, big or small, are heavily impacting your immune system. When your immune system gets run down, you open yourself up to disease. When the immune system gets compromised, then illness is allowed into the body. Our body is our temple. We must do everything we can to resist illness. Some families have issues with their immune system. While they may not necessarily have the same issue, for example, mom has lupus while her offspring may have celiac disease or rheumatoid arthritis. It still shows up in some form. There are many immune system illnesses and many people are undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Immune system problems could be something you have dealt with since you were a child, diagnosed or undiagnosed. Were you chronically ill as a child? We all have seen ads from the Shriner Hospitals and St. Jude's. These young children get on television and ask for our dollars to help support them in their illness. Why are they ill? It has nothing to do with what they did or didn't do. We don't always know why we have a chronically ill child, but we can assist them the best we can. Many illnesses have no underlying medical condition. When you are chronically ill as a child, you will often have gaps in your memory because of something painful that happened as a child. Not all do, of course, and there are some people who have had no chronic illness that have been abused or traumatized in some way that have gaps in their memory after age five. Do you have gaps in your memory after age five? Do you sense you may have blacked out significant traumas in your life? I was talking to a man about this and he said, Teresa, I do have gaps in my memory after age five. He proceeded to tell me he was sexually abused by one of his mom's friends. His mother hit him, threatened him and did not have a good home life. The man who raised him was not his biological dad. He didn't know that until he was 12 or 13 years old. When he asked his mom about his biological dad, she lied to him. He didn't find out his dad's real name until after he had died. Many times there are gaps in our memory after age five due to some type of trauma. Whether done to you or witnessed by you, you blacked out that event because it was so painful. Sometimes there was a parent or a guardian who was addicted to substances and you find yourself coping the same way. Do you struggle with addictions to, for example, alcohol, drugs, food, sex, or gambling? Perhaps you had parents who lived on a lake that had parties and get-togethers where lots of food and alcohol were being passed out. You learned how to drink amongst the adults. We all have to eat to live, but do we have to live to eat? Our food supply is full of chemicals, which is why the organic food market is really thriving. We are becoming more educated in our food choices and what is good and not so good for us. Some people are addicted to sex. They have to have the one night stands in order to feel good. They may have been sexually abused as a child and the only way to tame the demons inside is to get laid as often as possible. I remember when I was in seminary and living in the dorm in my early 30s that there was a young woman in the dorm who said, I just wanted to be my daddy's princess. Back then, that sounded strange. Now, in retrospect, she was saying that her dad touched her and did things to her that she was not able to fend off being a child. If you run away from home as a child and have nowhere to go, where do you go? Into foster care? Foster care can be worse than what you already have, so you choose to stay put. You are a minor and don't have resources to free yourself from the pain and the abuse that is happening. Gambling is just another way to numb yourself. 37% of the population struggles with illicit drug use and 12% struggle with both alcohol and drug use. 
Every year, 16 million Americans abuse substances, prescription drugs. The Americans abuse prescription drugs. These are either drugs prescribed or obtained illegally from someone else. These 16 million Americans make up 6% of the population. As you can see, that is a very staggering statistic. Are you one of them? These also could be considered external things to fill up an internal void or emptiness. Do you find yourself looking to external things to fill up an internal void or emptiness? We just talked about alcohol, drugs, food, sex, and gambling. What about shopping? Ladies, you find yourself buying stuff like clothes. If you live in a modern house with walk-in closets, you have plenty of space in which to hang your clothes. If you have more clothes than you have room for, you have a problem. You don't need more stuff. It's time to quit shopping for shopping's sake. Men, you spend your money on bigger ticket items like a new vehicle, motorcycle, boat, and the like. If this is not something in your budget and a true need, then it is a greed. You don't need the shiniest, best, newest model of a vehicle. The vehicle you have now runs well and works for you. Shopping and external things can be a symptom of having difficulty moving on with your life. Have you had difficulty moving on with your life after a divorce or the death of a loved one? Divorce and death are hard. Divorce with minor children is hard because the divorce decree states who has the child when. There is a schedule and unless you and your spouse can work out a suitable arrangement and talk to each other for the sake of the children, you have bigger problems. I know of couples who do talk to each other about the children and get along well. If something happens to one parent, illness, hospitalization, death, vacation, whatever, the other one will usually pick up the slack because it is their child also. Death is also hard. An older parent who was sick, and even though you expected it, it is not easy. A spouse who contracts cancer of some kind, and by the time you find it and it is diagnosed, it's too late. There are only a matter of weeks or days. You are left holding the bag. It's too late to decide what happens to your minor children. You are now their only caretaker. You have to manage the family, the budget, the activities, and the household. I'm sure there's more to take care of, but that's a, that's a big part of it. At first, after the death, you are feeling numb. You are going through the motions for a couple of months after the death getting social security squared away, looking at your investment portfolio, bank accounts, and of course, the funeral. All the well-wishers, all the people surrounding you for the first week or two was wonderful, but after the adult children go home, you are all alone. The house is empty, empty of the life you once had. Now you take on different roles and perhaps you start to change because you are now single, by choice or no choice in the matter. We may wonder if we are different personalities by the end of this chapter in our life. Do you suffer from multiple personality syndrome? I'm not talking about the roles you play. Multiple personality syndrome is now considered dissociative identity disorder. We have just looked at 10 examples of grief and loss and you are wondering why you need this and how I can serve you to your highest potential. So why do I need this and how can I help you? How can you help me? You are here because you are looking for answers. We all suffer from some type of grief or loss in our lives. It may have recently happened or it could have happened years ago. You are looking for someone who understands you and can meet you where you are at this time in your life. I have also experienced grief and loss. Grief happens for each death or loss we have in our lives. The first encounter I had with death was when I was five years old. My paternal grandfather died. I saw him in the casket with the bottom half of the casket closed. At age five, there is no abstract thinking. So while I understood he was dead, I was upset they chopped him in half. When in my early 40s, I am at the supper table with my mom and dad, and I was telling them about grandpa dying and thinking that his bottom half was cut off. At age five, like I said, there is no abstract thinking. What you see is what you get. 
After I said this, they just looked at each other as if to say, what did we do to our child to have this type of trauma for so many years? There was no preparation I remember except that I was going to see him in the casket coffin. My mom later told me I didn't stay for the funeral, but went to someone else's house until they came and got me. Now, who am I? I'm Reverend Teresa Heipel. I have earned a Master of Divinity in counseling. I have been a healer for decades. Healing is different than curing. Jesus didn't go around curing. Jesus went around healing. Curing means that the disease is gone. It is all gone. There is no more. Healing is for dealing with symptoms. For example, when someone has diabetic neuropathy, I can lay hands on the area that is feeling like pins and needles and take that pain away. I used to do this on my late husband and the pins and needles would go away for about a month or two at a time, which was wonderful. With our wonderful pandemic that we're having, we have a lot of loss from no touch. Something as simple as a handshake was not allowed. How did I get into this and why am I passionate about this? When I was in seminary, I found myself in an independent study because there was no courses for hospital chaplaincy, which was what I was working to become. It was why I was attending seminary. In the process, I wrote an 80-page paper on ministry to the physically ill and dying. I have been a pulpit pastor, a hospital chaplain, and counseled people and officiated over 30 celebrations of life. I am a Reiki master, which means I lay hands on people to help them heal. I'm a Reiki master practitioner and also a shaman. A shaman is a healer, and we take a spiritual entity with us, uh, with either him or her, and we are able to find, I'm able to find soul disturbances and extract it out. The soul comes back together to be whole and complete once again. It is a simple practice that took two years to learn to be effective. That is why you need this. So why do I need this and how can you help me? The problem is if you don't act, is that you stay right where you are. You are here because you are looking for solutions. The solution is as simple and as complex as buying a grief and loss workshop. There are exercises to do for each lesson. This can be done and filled out in a matter of a few weeks or it could take a lifetime. When you take the action to purchase this workshop, you will be able to peel back the onion and see layer upon layer. Is it easy? Not exactly. It can be scary to look and see what is there, but what is underneath all of that yuckiness is a beautiful soul that resides within you. All you have to do is act. You've already been to therapy for years. Let me ask you, has it worked out so far? If you are still going after more than one or two years, I would say it is not working the way it should. You should be able to come to some type of resolution for your grief and loss. Your counselor is not working with you to get you better. They just want your money and you to be dependent on him or her. The rise of our economic downturn does not help you get the resources you need to resolve those deep issues. Going to a counselor addresses the issue at hand, but not the problem underneath that issue. With my workshop, you will be living the life of your dreams. You will understand what triggered the problem and be able to resolve it quickly. Your relationships will improve. The family dynamic will start to be healed. You will start living your life in bliss. When all these dreams come true, you will be transformed into an alive, aware, and awake person that has been living half dead, unaware, and half asleep person existence. It's time to rise from our half dead, half awake slumber and live your life on your terms. It's time to buy the online workshop. My workshop includes a loss survey, which we will look at briefly for a moment. This will benefit you by understanding what the root problem is. A stress test to see where you feel stressed out. With identifying those stressors, you will benefit by being able to name it and claim it. Another feature is that you are going to be writing letters. The templates are here for you to use with the start of each sentence being given to you. When you write, you are free to express your grief in whatever way serves you best. The benefit from writing these letters is that you get to release whatever you were holding onto and holding back from. 
finally, you will write a self-forgiveness letter. Many times in our life, we find ourselves kicking ourselves for something that happened, whether or not you wanted it to happen. Perhaps someone stole something that was sentimental to you and you have no way to get it back. It is lost forever. This self-forgiveness letter is meant for you to heal from the inside out so you can move on with your life. Let's have you take a look at the lost survey. I'll leave it up on the screen for around 30 seconds so you have a chance to check off what resonates with you. This is the time to get your pen and paper out. I'll just leave this on, like I said, for about 30 seconds. Okay, the lost survey. So what resonated with you? Many of them may have spoken to you. The more losses, the more valuable this grief and loss workshop will be to you. The more you start peeling back the layers, the better you will heal and become your true, dynamic, aware, alive, vibrant, and self-confident person God created you to be. Perfect vision. Imagine a life in which you have gone through the workshop and feel light, bright, and joy-filled. You put in the time and went through the workshop and workbook and cut your cords, got your trauma release to be able to say, I have worked through this with Healing with the Rev LLC and am able to be fully functioning in this world, <clears throat> excuse me, this world we live in now. The pain of grief and loss are under control and you have a new lease on life. You are now present in your body. Your years of therapy with the psychologist is over. You are a freed person. You are no longer a slave to your pain. You have worked through the pain, through the workshop and workbook, and now have graduated with honors into your new life with a spring in your step. We're going to do a cord cutting meditation. The Cords That Connect Us by Deborah King. One of the most frequent methods of committing psychic warfare on another person is through energetic cording. Cords are streamers of auric light that connect us to one another and each one matches up to the same chakra in the other person. The existence of negative cords indicates a vulnerability within us. If we can be negatively corded, it means that we have emotions we haven't processed, memories we haven't brought to closure. Anytime we are feeling a lack of confidence or enthusiasm for something positive we'd like to pursue or find ourselves somehow sabotaging our own success, we must ask ourselves if we've made an unspoken courting agreement with someone else to not fully shine. We often make these agreements with our families because we don't want our parents or siblings or partners or children to feel bad about themselves in comparison to us, which then only results in keeping us small. Cords can only be formed with the consent of both people involved. To that end, our consciousness accepts our parents' cords even prenatally. And she goes on to say, my experience with negative cords has been quite intense my father, whom I adored, had courted me positively with love in my heart chakra. However, when he sexually abused me, this created a dark cord from his second chakra to mine, which robbed me of my innocence as a child. The molestation also formed a negative cord from his third chakra to mine, taking away my power and substituting his own, a result that comes with any kind of abuse. Fortunately, when you cut a negative cord, it does not disturb any positive ones that originate from that person. As you might expect, I also have negative courting from my mother as a child. She was jealous of my relationship with my father, and she courted the heck out of my third chakra in an effort to disempower me. She also courted me in my fifth chakra to keep me silent. It was rough. One of the most disturbing experiences I ever had as an adult was the result of my not having yet uncorded myself from my mother. Although I had completely worked 
my way through the many traumas with my father and had forgiven him, I simply didn't want to face the truth about my mom's hatred of me. We all want to think that our mom's mothers love us, so I continued to kid myself about that well into adulthood. Uh, so that was a quote by Deborah King, and she wrote a book called Be Your Own Shaman. So that's where that came from. So if you have a cord or string of some type you, that you can access easily, I'd ask you to find it. Like I say, it could be even be a sewing thread. We are going to do a five-minute cord cutting meditation. Now, I will now turn on the five-minute cord cutting meditation. Cutting the cord. Settle into a chair and get comfortable. Make sure your back is straight and your feet are flat on the floor. Close your eyes and breathe deeply and relax. Let your body settle in and allow your senses to awaken. Expand your awareness as far as it will go. You don't have to try, just allow. Now allow yourself to think of someone that makes you uncomfortable in any way. Someone you have a sticky feeling with. And bring your attention to the area called your solar plexus, located just above the belly button. If you look at this place in your body, do you see or notice a cord or an attachment of energy? that leads back to that person. Usually it will feel like a cord of sticky energy that doesn't feel clean and is difficult to separate. It can either be begun by you or by another person. It is fed by resentment, intolerance, entitlement, obsession, addiction. Codependence. Somehow you're connected to this person even if you don't want to be. <sighs> Breathe out. Decide to let them go. We are done. Use this connection. Imagine yourself saying, I release you fully and absolutely. We have no connection and no unfinished business. Nothing is unfinished between us. I release you to your highest good elsewhere. Now imagine you have a beautiful sword of gleaming metal 
forged in the heavens. Cut the cord or cords, because there may be more than one. And imagine a waterfall of energy separating you, cleaning the space between you until you no longer sense them, removing the electrical charge created by the cord. So that was the cord cutting meditation. Do you feel any different? It could be so subtle that you don't recognize it right away, but the cord cutting is happening inside your soul. Throughout a person's lifetime, they may try different things that don't work. Let's look at some of these now. What most people have tried does not work problem. The problem we have is grief and loss. The problem, we have been told to get over it. Problem, we stuff our feelings. Problem, we then discover health issues coming to the forefront. Solution, when you purchase this grief and loss workshop, you will feel vibrant and alive, relieved. You will feel loved. You will feel cared for. So here's the vision of the new you. Here's a testimony that has just recently happened. Diane said, not her real name, Diane said, Teresa, this is wonderful. These worksheets are really helping me come to terms with what has happened in my life. I am so thankful that you are doing this. I can tell you put a lot of time and effort to make this meaningful. My response, Diane, this is a lot like an onion. Once you take off the thin skin, then you peel it back layer by layer. Then you come out of it being healed of your past trauma. Her response was, yes, it does release my past trauma. Thank you. So Diane later told me that she was seeing her therapist. And Diane told me her therapist thanked me for doing this workshop. Another person came to me and told me that he felt that Satan was bothering him. I asked about his spirituality and I told him what he could do to help resolve that. And then I did a shamanic session on him. And the next day he called me to tell me whatever was bothering him was gone. In one session, I was able to affect that person so greatly. So what gets in the way and what stops you? This is where you're going to end up when you take massive action tonight to move past the grief and loss, which has turned into feeling traumatized. You will move into feeling vibrant, alive, and joy-filled. But there are some things that stop people. They say they have no money. I don't have the money for this. Can I get it for free? I understand that sometimes people have money issues. Money is just another way of saying that you are in lack. There is no lack in the universe. Look outside your window. What do you see? A little or a lot? A lot of sunshine, a lot of trees, a lot of wilderness. What do you see? There is no lack time. I don't have any more time in my day to do another project. This is not a project. This is an opportunity to change your life for the better right now. Rome was not built in a day. Neither is this going to be done in a day. In fact, I believe it would be highly detrimental to just sit down and do this in just one sitting. There are layers that need to be peeled back and to be able to sit with the temporary discomfort have a hard time finishing what you started? If you put in the work that I have laid out in the workshop, there will be change. You may only have five or 10 minutes a day. That's okay. You don't have to do one lesson in one sitting. Often things need to what I like to call rumble around for a while in the brain. It may not feel like you are changing, but little by little you will be. You will have a new awareness of yourself and that is worth a lot the time and attention you put into this is the amount of change that you will be undergoing 
It will be a positive change. There is more. More on grief and loss? This is just a taste of what I have to offer. With this grief and loss, I have a workshop that will talk about this plus, a cord cutting ceremony, stages of grief worksheet, a loss packet, letters to write, self-forgiveness letter, Akashic records, and so much more. What we have covered in this webinar, before the webinar, you came in not knowing the things that cause grief and loss. Now that we have gone through this presentation, we physically cut a cord and completed a loss survey. You have identified several causes of loss that you need to work on. So when you buy the grief and loss workshop for $399, you will also receive all 37 eBooks free value is $185. These are little eBooks that go through the talk about the different emotions we have. Each one has its own emotion and they are explained in detail. There's an essential oils guide. It's 200 pages long. It's value is $200. Essential oils are something are very essential to our well-being. In these pages, there will be answers for common health issues and which oils to use. Meaning of the letters of the alphabet, free. Its value is $99. There was a woman who, when she was young and she junior high, she went to her teacher in the Lutheran school and asked her where the alphabet came from. She said, Jean, next year you go to the Catholic school. They have a library there, you go research it. The next year she was in high school, she enrolled at the Catholic school and asked the sister, sister, where did our alphabet come from? The sister said, Jean, there's the library, research it. Jean researched it thoroughly. Shortly afterwards, the sister told the class they were supposed to write a paper on a particular subject. Jean did not follow the directions. She wrote on the alphabet. When the papers were handed in, the sister looked at them, of course, graded them and handed them back to the students. But Jean didn't get hers back. After class, she walked up to the sister and said, sister, I didn't get my paper back. Sister said, Jean, she handed it back then. She said, this is your life's mission. You need to take this out to the world. Jean grew up, married, and had children. She had this on the back burner for many years. When her children were grown up, she wondered what she was going to do for the rest of her life. That is when she brought this back out and started working with it once again. There is a way to write each letter that's very, uh, very life affirming and has a positive spiritual meaning for each letter of the alphabet. It's really cool, it's affirming, and it's really fun to work with. You're also going to get an act of love towards yourself, which is priceless, and it's going to bring you dignity, which is priceless. Tonight's special offer is when you buy the grief and loss workshop for $399, normally $999, you will get another $1,084 worth of freebies. You are getting $1,483 worth of goods for just $399. This low cost of $399 is specially priced for you today. You are receiving a 73% savings. Go to healingwiththerev.com to order your grief and loss workshop today. To order, go to www.healingwiththerev.com. The workshop is benefits. The workshop will move you from feeling intense emotions over grief and loss to a dynamic, vibrant, self-confident you. The workshop, again, features a cord-cutting ceremony, stages of grief worksheet, loss packet, Loss letters to write, lo a lost letter, an anger letter, a letter to an absent parent, a men's letter, lost letter from a loved one, a lost letter after an abortion, a lost letter after a miscarriage. You're not going to, you're not going to get all those. You're not going to have to write all those. Write the ones that, that are right for you. And a self-forgiveness letter. Akashic records plus so much more. I look forward to going so much deeper with you in the future. To order, go to healingwiththerev.com.